Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be solving problem 961 and repeated elements in size 2n array. It states in an array A of size 2n there are n plus 1 unique elements and exactly one of these elements is repeated n times. Return the element repeated n times. So this problem was posted as part of a contest that I actually missed and I was looking at the contest problems and I thought this one would be fairly easy to just create a solution on. So I went ahead and decided to solve it. And we're going to be looking, going over that solution. So here, what we're looking at is the input. And you can see that 3 is repeated here. So 3 is returned. Here you can see that 2 is repeated multiple times. So 2 is returned. And here 5 is repeated multiple times. So 5 is returned. Um, here we meet the constraints. You see the constraints here that the size is going to be from 4 to 10,000 and then we have the values from 0 to 10,000 and then a dot length is even so that kind of makes things a little bit more easier uh, for us because we don't have to deal with out length uh, array all right so we have to keep that in mind so what I'm going to do here is just copy this to save me some time and I've gone ahead and already create a project uh, in Java and I've created a class called and repeat it and I'm just going to go ahead and paste this um, method here so what we want to do is just keep an array so we're going to say var counter right it's going to equal to int array and then we're going to pass in uh, 10,000 right and I'm missing a new here okay so I'm using Java JDK 11 so we can use var and then since we're dealing with um, even uh, size array a what we can do is play around um, with it a little bit so I'm gonna create two variables here I'm just gonna say very low it's gonna equal to zero right and high is gonna equal a dot length right minus one and then I'm gonna say while the while low is less than high, right? We're gonna increment the low and we're going to decrement high. All right, there are many ways that you can actually break things up, but I think it's a little bit more cleaner if I do it this way. So what I'm gonna do is just say um, counter, right? And then we're gonna say A with the uh, low subscript. And then we just have to go ahead and increment that. And then we can do the same thing for um, high so let's say with the high subscript and then we just need to increment so whatever we see the value we just increment that location that corresponds to the uh, counter subscript or index location okay so remember that the counter initially going to have all zero values and actually this has to be um, 10,001 all right because we have to the array is going to go from zero all the way to uh, 10,000 all right so now we have that all you have to do is check and say if right uh, counter with the actual value in that location right is greater than one then we're going to return um, a low right so which is the actual value same thing for high so we're going to do counter I'm going to do a high is uh, greater than 1. Then we're going to go ahead and return a high. And for the other part here, we could just go ahead and return 0 to eliminate the error. All right. So what we're doing here, we're just breaking this into high and low. So we're going to split the array in half, and then we're going to um, converge the low and the high so it meets in the middle right now what we're going to do is that every time we find a value we just increment um, the value in that location so initial value is going to be zero because we're dealing with an int array right and if that value is greater than one so meaning that we find two occurrences of that number we're going to go ahead and just return um, that number all right the second way of doing it is to actually use um, set. 
And by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and make it static. Okay, so just because it's easier to call in main. So, and since I will not be using out of this, I'm just gonna make this private. All right, so private static int. And I'm just gonna use this, I'm gonna say repeat it uh, n times. And I'll use sets for this. Uh, create the array again, A. Uh, we can break things down like this again, but I think it's probably just better uh, if we don't. So I'm going to say var. All right, I'm going to say container. I'm going to equal to new hash set. And it did import. Yes, it did. Okay. So we're going to say we're going to say for a var, right? And we're going to say digit. And we're going to go over the digits in A. We're going to say if a container that contains a digit, uh, meaning that we've already seen this before, we're just going to go ahead and return a digit. All right. If we haven't seen it before, then we're going to, we want to make sure that we add digit to the container. So we're going to say container dot add uh, digit. All right. And then here to eliminate the error again, we're just going to go ahead and return zero. All right. So what I'm saying here is that let's say that we have numbers like this. This is our numbers. We have two, um, two, three, right? So we go over the first digit. Well, that's not in the container. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add two here. Then we go back up here. Now we add the second two. So the second two things, the second, uh, the first two is already in here, right? So that means that the container contains two already. So we know that two is a duplicate now. So at most, we have, what we have to do is check for two values, all right? And that's it, and that's it. All right. So what we can do now is just create main. So let's say public static void main pass in the strings array All right okay so what we're going to do just say var a is going to equal to new int and we're just going to pass in some values here so i'm going to say two two three um four so remember that it says that our actual um array right is going to be of the even length all right so we have to the arrays are of even length so um when we create that make sure that you actually pass an even length and not an odd length array because it won't work all right okay so what we're going to do is then just create the printout uh, methods and then we're going to do um, repeat it n times and pass in a and we should do the same for the other one so I'm going to say srt repeat it and the set one and pass a all right and if we run this we should expect the same answers all right so we get uh, two and two and we can modify this again and let's add in another two and six, all right? And if we run this again, we should expect two for the answers. Let's change this to maybe fives, all right? So fives and change this to seven. So we should expect fives as the answers, all right? So you can see that we're getting the output right. All right, so there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys uh, before I actually um, stop the video. And it's the fourth solution that I created and um, and optimized. All right, so I created this solution in Java. And the reason why I'm showing you guys is because it looks kind of uh, really messy because I had to do a, lot, a little bit of calculations here. Um, but you guys can see here that I actually uh, used the uh, Zoring operator to um, to work things out, okay? We know that if we zor two numbers, right, uh, then we produce the output is zero. So what we can say is that if we just zor um, the location, 
right, and store that value in, then um, we should just uh, get that number. And if we store that again, we should get zero, All right? So this solution actually runs um, in uh, four milliseconds, right? So it's actually a very uh, fast runtime. The ones that I showed you guys, uh, they're, they're optimal. They run, a, they uh, beat at least 70%, right? But the reason why I'm not showing you guys how to do this one is because uh, sometimes um, the cleanliness and presentation of the of the code actually matters to people that actually want to learn about it. Uh, this just looks like a bunch of, of junk and a bunch of checks. Uh, the thing is that it won't go through all the entire checks. It will only check chunks of it, right? So that's the the good part. That's why it's optimized. And the fact that we're using uh, bitwise operators um, here it also makes it optimized as well. But let me just show you guys um, a little bit of what's going on here. So you guys uh, can maybe try this out later on. I might have this on my GitHub. Um, if you guys want to test this out, I'll have it on the GitHub and probably have the link uh, down in the comment section below, All right? But uh, this is this is pretty much what um, what's happening here. Okay, so here we know we have duplicates, right? So what we can do is this. So let's just do this. So we're gonna say. Um, System out of the print line. All right, so the, what I do first is I keep a counter just like I did here, right? And remember the counter is going to be all zeros here. So we're going to start with the initial value of zero. And so let's x let's x or that with some arbitrary number like three. Okay, so if we x or this, then x or is going to be reflexive. So you're going to get um, three back. And you guys can see here it just says that zero x or three can be replaced with three. Okay, so it it's literally just giving us hints here. All right, so if we do that, we see that it returns three. And then if we XOR that again to three, right, then we should um, actually get zero. Okay, so we get zero. Okay, so now the tricky thing is that our actual um, limit for the actual number actually includes zero. So now I'm stuck with um, trying to figure out if the first x or that I found in that um, actual array, x or that second zero, right? So if I just x or the second zero here, this is still gonna give me zero, right? But it doesn't tell me if I x or this with the first occurrence or the second occurrence. So now I'm stuck, right? So what I decided to do was, instead of doing it that way, um, I decided that for zero cases, I would have to handle it a little, a little bit differently. So for zero cases, what I did was, I just use the regular uh, increment that I showed you guys on the first portion of the tutorial, right? And then I count it for other things like if the low and the high are, right, I brought zero. So the low is just zero or the high is just zero. And if it's not, if the high is not zero, then I just went ahead and just um, created another, another XOR in that spot, okay? And you guys can see that um, even though this is small code, um, the runtime solution is actually um, very, very great, right? So uh, I hope maybe in the future you guys can challenge yourself to maybe uh, study a little bit more about uh, bitwise operators, right? And um, see just how you guys can use that um, to speed up things. All right, guys, this will be it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you guys have any um, questions, please leave it down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys again. Bye-bye.